Hello, welcome to Oz Scale Modeling, and welcome to this unboxing and uh, review, or my point of view, of this uh, Japanese light cruiser, the Makuma. And as you can see, it's uh, quite a large model. This is a 1350 scale, this is a Tamiya kit. And I've run out of room on the bench, so I've had to reposition my camera to fit it all in because this box is quite long. So let's have a look at some of the details that this has on the box here for a start. Okay, so you have the option here of building a waterline or on the model or a full hull model on the display stand that's included. Um, this includes this photo etch in here and they have uh, aircraft included as this carries some float air float craft airplanes on here they also say there's a uh, anchor chain in here and metal propeller shafts so that's that, that's quite good let's have a look at the side of the box here so we've got some really nice pictures on the side of the box of what the model's going to look like when it's complete. Just bring that around so you can see. Um, in fact, let me take the plastic off this. I'm going to get the plastic off and we'll reposition the camera for a better view. Back in a second. Okay, so let me get this plastic off. Now this is Japanese light cruiser, the Makuma. It's an interesting ship. Move this off. All right. Sorry about the reflection of the light. I'm try and fix that. just uh, so big a bit on my bench here anyway um, so we'll have a look at some of the pictures on here so there you go so there it is one three fifty scale and uh, that's what it's going to look like nice pictures there And the box does not actually say the size of this ship. It tells you the length of the actual ship was 200 metres long. Um, 12,000 tonne displacement and 152,000 horse, horsepower. But the actual model itself, I'm not too sure about the length. Um, on the rest of the box, we've got some more pictures of it here um, and that's obviously showing you can have it as a waterline model or with the hull You've got that option there which would make quite a nice size diorama if you did do the waterline um, there's a picture looking at the main superstructure there and the, and the smokestack a couple of turrets here we got some aircraft on the back the cranes and the catapult for them looks quite good. The rest is all in Japanese until we get to a little sheet of photo which it'll be in the box. Had to focus properly, but anyway, we'll have a look inside and see all that. Uh, that's it. So let me get this box open. <coughs> We'll have a look inside. Okay. All right. So, typical of uh, the Tamiya kits, uh, very well packed. Um, 
so here we go, we've got the stand here, which is um, nothing special. Um, but we can paint, you could paint that up, get that looking okay. There's also little ones there, I think those are for the aircraft, mount those on. Yep, put that aside. Um, this also has the photo etch here. You can see the way they pack this. So there's our photo etch in here. It's all packets are glued down. There's also steel bars in there for some of the rigging, I would guess. And I'm not going to take that off at the moment, but that's quite securely put on there. In the photo etch, we got um, so it looks like we've got the brackets for the float aircraft to be mounted on. This looks part of the catapult is in there. Um, maybe parts of the crane as well that lifts these aircraft. Definitely the um, uh, little boxes that the aircraft sit on. Those possibly are as well. Uh, not sure what those pieces are. We'll have a look as we go through the kit. Okay. Right, what have we got? Sprues in here. So here's one. So here we have the aircraft. There's a couple of aircraft on this side. There's the catapult there. else do we have? We've got the turrets here with all the, the guns, cannons for those, barrels for them. There's quite a few, it looks like there's six of them. And again, looks like two sprues of exactly the same thing, so that will cover the aircraft, which looks like there are four aircraft, or is that three and three? No, there's four in there. So we got we'll have a total of eight aircraft on here. What else we got? Here we have the deck, looks like. Yep. So there's some of the deck and these parts here look like some of the um, supports that go inside the hull. Um yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what they are. And looking at the deck, it's quite detailed there. Looks nice. You can see there's some wood planking on there. It's uh, a bit of um, metal grate that you would see on the front of the fore deck there. Yeah, a few pieces. I'm not sure what they are. They could be like rudders there. Um, there's the um, propeller shaft um, and mounts for on the hull. It'll typically in quite good detail on the decks. A lot of bits and pieces. There's a few holes in there, which means there's going to be a lot of things to be adding onto these decks by the looks of it. I'm not sure what those are. Anyway, let's go another packet here. Okay, so this one here, we've got the smokestacks. Well, the smokestack, both halves of it. Looks like some platform up on there. Um, these are probably what the turrets sit on. So I'm pretty sure you can um, t turn them around on the deck. Um, yeah, it's probably parts of the mast in there. There's a radar unit there. 
Uh, some form of grill. Interesting. I actually built the um, the heavy cruiser, uh, Chikuma, <coughs> by Tamiya, which is very similar to this. Although I don't know the difference between a light cruiser and a heavy cruiser. Maybe someone in the comments could point that out. So far, it seems like the light, the heavy cruiser, for some reason, has less turrets than this light cruiser. Just looking at my model over there, I'm just looking at the aircraft though. There's six, seven aircraft on it. Maybe it's the number of aircraft. So we've got more deck here, which is. Okay, so the deck looks like it's in up to. Gosh, how many pieces? So we've got one, two, three, four, five pieces. Although this part here may be an upper deck level. Not too sure. We'll have a look through that when we get to the instructions. Um, again, there's some platforms there where there's probably going to be some guns sitting on those. Uh, probably more parts of the superstructure on there. Definitely going to be a lot of pieces going on those decks. Now we got here um, a bit of history. So maybe this is a reason why uh, I'm wondering what the differences were. It's got the Makuma as she appeared prior to her conversion into a heavy cruiser. Okay, so she, they turned it from a light. Well, what is it? It's a light cruiser to a heavy cruiser. Um, and it was it, that was in 1935 she was the second ship of the Megami uh, class of light cruisers and uh, okay they include torpedo launches um, quite a bit of stuff in there where it was, Battle of the Suda Strait, and she went to the Indian Ocean. Okay, so let's have a look under here. And we have more sprues. We got uh, these, which look like, um, well, that looks like part of the crane. These I can only guess would be pipe work on the smokestacks. There's some mast, there's the mast there. See that in there, our mast. Um, they're very well packed. You know. Definitely not gonna find any loose parts. There we go. Now, now in here, We've got lots of stuff in here. So here we have some lifeboats and launches. We have uh, torpedo launches. Um, some more guns, anti-aircraft guns. Uh, these look like two of the same sprue, so it's a repeat of everything some smaller turrets so they're going to be built up there by the looks of things there's going to be four of those um, very nicely detailed all the way through especially even the boats look at if you can see I know it's, they're still in plastic but you can even see the wood decking on that launch there you know, it's, that's really nice you don't usually see that and this looks like a cover if you want to have optional like a canvas cover over the launches. So there. Okay. Alright, now we're up to this. So here we go. Well at least we know how long it's gonna be now. That's a fair size. So this is the whole side of the ship. 
both sides of the ship here. Um, looks quite good. Not sh too sure how that anchor um, spot there is. Looks a bit uh, out of scale. I'm not sure. Doesn't seem right. But anyway, quite a lot of portholes. Which, you know, it's not a bad idea to drill them all out if you can when you're building this. Adds to the effect. Um, I do see the lines along, if you can see that. Try and get that in closer. There you go. You can see the lines along the side of the ship there in the detail. It's very good. Rarely fault Tamiya kits, personally, in my lack of experience. So there's the uh, waterline base, which if you wanted to build it that way, it would just drop straight onto that. Which I'm thinking in here there would also be a weight, but I don't see one, so maybe there isn't. Normally the waterline models in 700 scale anyway would have a weight that would sit in there, but maybe not in this. Here's our hull. Um, so, this looks not bad. Let me just open this up. We'll have a bit of a better look at the hull. our hull. Now it looks like it has uh, these posts here which you, you screw in um, parts of the deck down with because we'll have a look at that in a sec but just looking at the side of the hull it looks quite okay it's going to be needing a few bit of clean up as you can see there's some of the mold that it came out has got some marks on there. I noticed that the lines go right under the hull as well, not just along the side for the metal plating I guess you'd call it. Um, but there's there seems to be sink mark sink holes there as well. Which may be a little bit difficult to um, clean up without damaging the other lines in there. Um, there's like a join there. I can't feel anything. Is and I'm sure once you put paint over it, you're not going to see any of that. Just the raised thing. You just run your nail across, and it's not catching on any of those. So even though this looks like it's three pieces, and it probably is, you can see the marks across there. The three pieces. See, there's one there. That runs all the way around in the center here, goes all the way across up the side, and there's another one here too on the stern. Okay. Anyway, that's the hull. I'll put that aside. <coughs> what else do we have? Okay, so there's our stickers to go on the stand for the cruiser, Makuma. Your choice of English or Japanese, obviously, with the Tamiya logo there as well. Um, that's good. And a little bag here, um, they supply all these little bits here. So, you've got these little oh, I forget the name of what they call them that you use to put your turrets on that let, allows you to turn them. Screws for screwing down the deck, there's quite a lot of screws in there of all different sizes. You even include a Phillips head screwdriver in there. Um, oh, there's our anchor chain in there, which looks interesting. It's, uh, I don't... Yeah, that's a strange looking... Oh no, the anchor chain's in there. It's sort of black, so it may not have to 
um, paint that. There's a couple of other bits of metal in there for something else, probably um, for securing um, part of the deck. But, uh, okay. What else do we have? Uh, usual multi-language cards that nobody reads. <laughs> All right, we've got the instruction manual we'll have a look at. But first, let me have a look at this. Uh, this looks quite nice, look at that. So this is a full to scale color picture of what our finished product should look like showing the aircraft on the deck, um, boats, everything's clear. Um, it's telling you what everything is. So we got uh, twin 25 millimeter guns there, twin 12.7 centimeter high angle guns, um, high angle di directors there, uh, twin 13 millimeter guns are here. Uh, mushroom vents. Uh, that's the whole. It's all right. Um, so that's good that they give you the names of everything there. Swinging boom, multi-purpose washing area there. Yeah, that's interesting. A multi-purpose washing area. That's where I guess the crew can go out there and do all their underwear. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Bollards, screw guard cable holder, loading practice machine for the guns, the screw guard. And then we go on to the side of the deck here and we see the davits, the anchor, the aft end scene stuff, the flag on there. We've got the roller fair lead, things that I've never, ho I've obviously built but never knew the names of them. So that's quite good. There's torpedo tubes in the side here. Um, the aft bridge. We've got the funnel. The whistle. There we go. The whistle's up there on the funnel. Searchlights. Uh, direction finders. Lightning rod. Ah, always wanted to know what that one was. Good. Searchlight regulator. So, yeah, really handy. And then over the other side will probably the colour call outs, yeah. So here we go with uh, uh, Tamiya's call out, of course. And we got the TS or XF79 is the deck, which will be a, a brown, I'm sure. And we got the grey for the sides. There's all the colours for the aircraft. Um, also showing where all the decals go on the aircraft, which hopefully we've got those. They're probably inside the instruction manual, which we'll have a look at now. <coughs> okay. Instructions. Right, yeah, let's have a good look at this. All right. Okay, so we've got... Lots of stuff in Japanese. Um, there's some history of the, well, this whole page, or well, half the page is in English, and it's telling you the, um, the ship itself, the London Naval Treaty withdrawal and conversion into a heavy cruiser, interesting there, demise of the Makuma at Midway, so what happened to it at Midway? And we've got all again another language, another language, another language. All right, instant cement, we all know about that. Take pieces off, glue them on. Um, photo etch parts, yes, we know we have photo etch, it's good. Painting tips, all right, English painting tips. Prior to painting, remove all the dust and oil that's something I always suggest is to wash all the parts in warm soapy water and rinse them off properly and let them dry. Um, telling you here to remove excess cement. Uh, 
yeah, using sandpaper, smooth bits and pieces. It's saying brush painting is the most common method of adding colour to models. Although I don't think it is anymore. I don't know, what do you think? Do you think most people these days are using an airbrush? Or are they still brush painting? I guess it all comes down to your availability of an airbrush and where you are. But I don't know. It'd be interesting. Uh, and spray painting. Um, again, goes into using sp uh, airbrushes as well and cans as well which I just can't imagine using a spray can for a model. Um, I don't know, I just don't think you can get that nice fine cover out of a, a rattle can. It's just, yeah, anyway. Um, so, going to another language, going to preparation. Recommended tools, the usual. You need your knife, your, your cutters, your tweezers, your glues, and cement. Yep. Paint required. So here we have our list of paint. So we've got our TS33, which is a dull red, which is usually the whole colour, <coughs> which I find is not red enough, so I usually brighten that up with a bit of extra red if I can. Um, what else do we have here? Let me just check. Okay, let me just adjust this camera and get this looking a bit brighter so you can see easier. One second. There we go, that's better. So, uh, we'll head over the paint. Oh yes, the paints. So we've got uh, gun metal, gold leaf for the screws, part green, which is usually for um, lights and maybe the aircraft have some green. Flat black, flat white, um, flat aluminium, metallic grey, desert yellow, red brown. Red brown would be the deck colour, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, there's dark green in there as well, but it gives you all the related X and XF codes for your Tamiya paints. Okay, so here we go. Um, it starts with step one. Okay, so step one is getting the hull set up and putting all these braces in, which to me, I don't know. I mean, look how thick this is. I don't know if you can see the thickness of that. I mean, that's got to be like three mil thick. There's no way that's going to bend or warp or change shape. I don't see the necessity of having all these braces in here. Um, I'm sure that they have to be put in there because the whole, uh, the deck's going to be probably attached onto it, the tops of them. But it seems, um, you know, there's even screws going in. So there's three millimeter screws going in um, for the base. So they have to be drilled out there. They've already got them marked in the bottom and they will go in for your stand, to go on the stand. Um, you'll put all those support pieces in. Um, there's showing for the full hull as well as the waterline model. So even the waterline model has all these braces going in as well. Um, yeah, which is different. I guess the um, for the waterline model, that the sides of the ship are going to attach to the sides of those braces, and the deck will go on top. All right. Um, now, what do we have? So there's some side brackets. So actually, the actual sides of the ship that we saw not only um, go attach onto here, but they're screwed on as well. So there's attachment points here. Where they actually get screwed on. Uh, so this model is not going to break in a hurry <laughs> or, or, or fall apart. Um, more screws going in for some more um, attachments for some of these brackets. Uh, that's all part of the hull assembly. 
else do we have? So we've got the deck underside here. Let me just move that out of the way. So again, this looks like where the turrets may go through into so that they can rotate. No, I'm wrong. It goes under the center of the ship. So your superstructure is going to sit all on top of that. There's your two four and a half decks. Um, again, there's screws there, so they're actually screwed down as well. Um, what else do we have? That's step five. Step six is all right. So step six is attaching all the um, the screws and the rudders underneath, which is something I usually leave because I don't like taking risk of bumping these and knocking them off which has happened in the past but of course now they've got the stand being put together the base and, and the stands for it to go on and even once you've connected all that on straight away they want you to screw it, screw it down to the base which gives you something to work on I guess but you also got to remember that before you do that you'd want to have this painted and this painted as well uh, all depends on the system and the way you go about building it up and how much you want to tape off <laughs> so here we go over the page to step 9 is all the torpedo launches so they're all getting put on um, it's quite interesting here, they give quite good detail. It has four type 90 61 centimeter triple torpedo launchers and 24 type 90 torpedoes. Each torpedo could be loaded in 16.6 .6 seconds and had a range of 7,000 meters and 15,000 meters at 45 and 35 knots respectively. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, lots of detail uh, information. We go over to step 10 and here we go putting down um, on top of the central deck is part of this uh, which is also getting screwed down. So there's quite a few sc screws holding this together. Here we're doing the bases of all the turrets on the fore deck. Polycaps, that's what I was trying to think of before, polycaps. There's a dozen or more polycaps for all the guns that can be pretty much rotated in turn, including the torpedo launchers you can rotate. Um, step 12 is basically putting down all the um, different bits and pieces on the deck. We've got ventilators. Um, lots of ventilators coming up through the deck there. Uh, this is the bridge, attaching the bridge base. Um, lots of pieces there. Um, the funnel, which is a unique shape. And of course, there they are. There's those pipes that run along the side of the funnel. Um, goes into quite a detail. We've got useful tools here. We've got modeling scissors, a diamond file, and bending pliers. Um, that's because we're at the point here where they're asking for the photo etch. So there is some photo etch to go on uh, part of the funnel funnels here. 16 is building up the crane. Uh, Again, I thought there was, yeah, there is some photo etch for the lengths, for the sides of the crane, just to bring them up looking nice. Quite a lot of colours there I'm looking at. Oh no, they're lights. Okay, so there's a light um, set up on the crane there, with different colours. The aft bridge here, with uh, what looks like part of the mast area or the supports for the crane. Um, this is attaching the funnel. We've got searchlights going on here. 
Lots of searchlights. Uh, the bridge. Alright, so there's lots of work to be done on the bridge here with more searchlights. Um, the binoculars will go around on there. We've got uh, lots more pieces going up. Another poly cap. There's something on the top there that will rotate. Um, more guns, AA guns on the deck. Step 20. Step 21 has more searchlights, range finders, um, side searchlights going on the deck, um, catching more deck parts, lots and lots of deck parts. And then step 23, we start putting the turrets together. So the turrets are going to go together here. All the barrels going in. Polycaps all going in there, so it looks like the barrels can be rotated up and down. And turned around to left and right as well. Um, we've got instructions on attaching the anchor chain onto the deck. Pretty straightforward. Um, there's no moulding on the deck, so you'd have to try and remove anchor chain. Um, step 25 is attaching the rear, rear turrets, along with some more pieces and going on the deck. Uh, what else we have? There's something about decals to apply here. I'm not sure where they go. I haven't seen the decals. Oh, we're getting. Oh, hang on, we haven't found any decals yet. That's interesting. Um, high angle guns. Some more guns to go on deck. Now we're into the boats and the launches. So there's quite a few of those. Looks like half a dozen. And where they go on the deck. We go over to the aircraft all the aircraft there's a corrections card in here for the aircraft I'm getting concerned because I haven't found decals yet um, please use this sheet instead of the corresponding instruct instructions page 2230 okay so there's been something that's changed in there we'll need that for um, which includes parts of the catapult how that goes together here. Um, you can depict the aircraft in flight, that's what those metal bits were, they weren't for the rigging there for the, uh, if you want them, they're not bad, if you're doing a waterline model and you're doing a diorama, they can be handy, have them flying beside the aircraft, beside the ship. There's a catapult going together, two catapults by the looks of it, one on each side, and mounting the aircraft step 31 and that's it and on the last page we have a little bit of information about decals which there are none which is interesting so let me just have another look in that box and I'll be back in a sec okay so I found the decals they were hidden under the uh, main tag and there's the usual flags to put on and under there are some decals uh, we might as well have a look let me just take this off because you know decals can be pretty important and sometimes these models are sort of made neglect the decals so here we go bring this up close oh way too bright let me just change the camera setting again back in a second okay so let's have a look at the decals here they are so unfortunately there's no waterline depth markings in fact as far as I can tell they're just for the aircraft the tails of the aircraft has some decals. There's uh, actually nothing for the ship itself. 
Anyway, that's the decals. All right, we get organized here and we'll come back and finish up. One second. Okay, so there she is, a Japanese light cruiser Makuma. Um, looks like a nice kit to build, I'm sure it will be. Um, like any Tamiya kit, I'm sure every piece will fit together really nice. Uh, like I said, I've built the Takuma and uh, it, it, it went together beautifully. Um, the instructions are all there, all in detail. The usual quality detail is in 31 steps. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, these are beautiful, these. In fact, these you could almost display on its own beside, you know, behind the ship somewhere. Really nice. Yeah. yeah. So that's the unboxing. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, hope you uh, that's uh, enticed you to maybe go out and buy this. Um, I picked this up for only $120 in Australia, and it's actually I bought this that $120, $140 in Australia. Um, I've seen this advertised up. $200 for this kit and more so I've got a good deal um, when am I going to build this I'm not too sure um, I'm currently doing a submarine build at the moment and I have a special build possibly coming up um, after that so it might be a while but eventually we'll get to this anyway Thanks a lot everybody for watching and please subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to go back to any other unboxing, um, go back to my playlists and you'll see all the other unboxings and builds that I've done. Um, just about every unboxing I've done is the start of a build process that, that follows. Um, if, so please, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up and comment below uh, like to hear your comments of what you think of this and uh, if you've already built this let me know what it was like um, yeah, all information is good for for myself and anyone who's who's reading and, um, and i look forward to seeing you all in the next video okay.